Is the hype real on Discovery Series 12? Let's find out. Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of the Bourbon Hutch. Thanks so much for joining me on this journey through the world of whiskey. So I could not be more excited to be reviewing for you today Bardstown Bourbon Company's Discovery Series number 12. This just dropped very recently on September 6th. I was able to get a bottle very early, which is awesome. And the word on the street already from what I'm hearing is that this is a phenomenal blend. I'm interested to see just how good it is today. Why is there so much hype around it? It has a lot to do with the stats on this bottle in particular and this blend. So let's just take a look right on the side. Bardstown has what's in here. It's 48%, a 14 year old Kentucky bourbon. The mash bill on that is 75% corn, 13% rye and 12% malted barley. 29% of this is 10 year old Kentucky bourbon. That's 78% corn, 10% rye and 12% malted barley. 15% is another 10 year old Kentucky bourbon, 78% corn, 13% rye and 9% malted barley. And then last but not least is 8% of Bardstown Bourbon Company's own distillate, six years old, four grain, that is 60% corn, 26% rye, 10% wheat, and 4% malted barley. In terms of the rumors around what each of those might be coming from, since this is all sourced whiskey, the 48% 14-year-old, a lot of people tend to think that's a wild turkey mash bill, which if that's correct, you know, you've got the Russell's 13 and the Russell's 15 that have come out, and this might sit right in between them with a 14 year old bourbon. Then you've got 10 year old Kentucky. That's one of those is probably from Heaven Hill. And then the other one is, I've heard rumors, Jim Beam, maybe Knob Creek. And then obviously the 8% is their own four grain recipe, which I've heard great things about. Price tag on this bottle is 140 bucks. Not necessarily that bad for something that is a little bit more limited and certainly has great age on it. So I think in terms of accessibility and fairness of price, this is still a, a pretty solid representation, especially coming off the heels of Discovery Series 11, which had a lot of 13 year old bourbon in it and was a really, really awesome bottle. And I think justified its price and kind of got the Discovery Series back on top form. So we will do a comparison to Discovery Series 11 after we dive into the 12, because I think it's only fair to really see how the two blends compare and if they continue to move in the right direction and which one's better. But let's let 12 sit by itself for a little bit. Let's dig into this particular bourbon, this blend, and see how good it actually is. Could this be a contender for Whiskey of the Year? We'll just have to see. All right, let's dive in. On the nose. Okay, big caramel, big, just soft, decadent caramel. Cherry. Kind of like a Fig Newton fruitiness. Definitely some Fig Newton. Citrusy too. Orange citrus, vanilla, subtle oak, not a ton of oak, but it's definitely wrapping around some of the notes here. Slight nuttiness too. Kind of a peanut, brittle, maybe almond note in there as well. But I would say the main note there is that decadent caramel and the citrus. It's a very nice nose. Definitely grabs your attention, welcomes you in very nicely. All right, let's go to the palate and we'll see how good the whiskey is because that'll be the true test. All right, cheers. Hmm. Yeah. That is good. The oak is way more powerful on the palate and so rich. The mouthfeel is exceptional. It's really, really coating my whole mouth. Oak, for sure, kind of the star of the show. 
a subtle spice mixed in, not too spicy though. That's really more of a background note that is coming up on the finish for me, but you got the oak, the big caramel is there for sure. The orange citrus is layered in there as well. A touch of that almond nuttiness is in there, but I'd say the, the oak, the caramel, the there's a vanilla cherry thing going on as well, but the oak and the caramel and the citrus are really prominent here. Okay, now that I've got it on the palate, let's go in for a second sip. It's definitely impressing me, but we'll see how it holds up and which new flavors develop on the palate. Cheers. Mm. Yeah. Touch of that peanut brittle, more of that Fig Newton came through on that sip as well, but it's still the oak. I said the caramel on the nose was decadent, and the caramel is definitely present on the palate, but I think the oak is the decadent, beautiful, bold note that sort of carries through the whole sip. Really starts developing on the mid palate and then takes you all the way through the end. On the front, it's a little bit more of that caramel vanilla cherry experience. And then I do think that orange citrus is, is another through line that this whiskey has. Actually, what I'm gonna do now is get myself a little sip of water, really kind of get the palate ready for a third sip and a full evaluation of the whole whiskey and the finish in particular. All right, let's go in now for the third sip. We'll really think about the whiskey as a whole and focus on the finish. Just to revisit the nose real quick. Oh yeah. Oak peeking through a little bit more now. Caramel and cherry. Maybe a little apple as well. Pretty fruity and citrusy, and but also oak and deeper dark notes too. All right, cheers. Yeah, orange, caramel sauce, bold oak. The oak is what stays through. And there's like a touch of a leather, aged leather note on the finish as well. The finish is long, it holds some of that citrus, keeps the oak going, and then that touch of leather is there as well. It's subtle spice gives it some staying power. So, it's not what I would call a spicy whiskey. I don't feel like it presents spice as a forerunner kind of note, but there's enough spice in there to kind of keep the sip going. And the oak and the caramel are really, really nice. I mean, it's a fantastic blend. Really, really good. Okay, what I wanna do now is compare it to the Discovery Series 11, see how they really stack up against each other and then walk you through my final analysis of Discovery Series number 12. Okay, so I've pulled out the 11 here. Again, I really enjoyed this blend. Thought it justified its price and was great. Let's dive in. Hmm, interesting. Way more cherry and spice. And more oak on the nose on the 11. The 12 is way more of the caramel and citrus. This almost feels more desserty, the 12 does, and fruity. And the 11 feels a little darker because of the oak, but less complex. All right, let's go in on the palette on the 11 and we'll compare directly to the 12 that we've been sipping on. Cheers. still really good but it is a lot more of what I got on the nose is coming through on the palate just oak kind of a steady medium bodied oak a ton of cherry and more of this like spicy baking spice experience for me uh, barrel spice in there as well it's it's more of a three to four note experience but man the mouth feel is creamy Maybe a creamy almond here as well, so something in that vein. But it is creamy, it's decadent as well, it's rich, it's awesome. Very interesting that it's a little bit more straightforward 
than the 12. Let me get a little bit of water again. We'll go right back to the 12 and we can do our full final analysis and see how it stacks up. All right, back into the 12 for a full fair comparison. Oh yeah. The orange citrus caramel, the caramel is so big and awesome on the nose. Peanut brittle as well. It's just more going on. All right, on the palate, cheers. Mm. Yeah, it's definitely the more complex blend. The citrus, the caramel, the oak, all there. The interesting layers of the nuttiness, the leather notes that come in at the end are really nice. The subtle spice is kind of layered in there. The Fig Newton extra layers of fruit. There's more fruit going on. There's kind of an apple. You could convince me there's cherry. There's definitely an orange citrus. And then there's that fig experience as well. So more fruit. The citrus is here. The oak is still there. And then the leather kind of finishes it off. This 11 is still spectacular. I actually don't think that these are super far apart in terms of overall quality and experience that you're going to get from something that you spend the money on. I do think I might be tending toward the 12 as the more interesting complex sip. Uh, the, the 11 is just so enjoyable to sip and so straightforward, but this 12 is like asking me to spend an hour with it and really break it down and just kind of explore. And that in some ways is the mark of a, a truly excellent whiskey and one that's worth the, the extra money to go out and get. Okay, so obviously we're all excited. I'm excited that this is the new thing. It's awesome and the hype is kind of generating, the machine is generating for this one. I think it is worth it for the 140 bucks, 100% a recommended buy from me. If you've never gone above that threshold of 100 bucks or you're not sure if, you know, spending that money on a whiskey is worth it, this is one that I'd recommend starting to explore. I think it's relatively available compared to a lot of the other allocated releases that will come out toward the end of the year. And you're going to be sipping on one of the best things I've tasted all year already. So it's definitely a worthy continuation of this discovery series line. It, it kind of ups the ante from the 11. I think it is, I think it is the better product in a lot of ways. So super cool, awesome, awesome whiskey from Bardstown. Let me know in the comments below, have you been able to try this one yet? And what did you think? Have you compared it to the 11? And if you have, which one came out on top for you? While you're at it, hit the like button on this video. That's what gets it out to the most people. And then if you haven't already, please consider subscribing to the channel and joining us for the rest of 2024 and beyond. As the end of the year hits, it's definitely gonna ramp up and there's gonna be a lot of content. Hopefully that'll be helpful and just a lot of fun about the world of whiskey here in 2024. Until I see you guys again for another video, all I can say is keep drinking good whiskey and cheers.